This is Father Bixel. He made a trip to uh, Jeju Island in South Korea, and we're interviewing him today for Facebook. How did you uh, happen to want to go to Jeju Island? Well, I heard about Jeju Island from a report that Dennis Apple of the Pacific Life Community, uh, uh, he went to Jeju Island with Bruce Gagnon of the, uh, what, of the uh, network of uh, people concerned about uh, weapons in space, nuclear weapons in space. I, I don't have that down correctly, his title there. But in, anyhow, they brought back, uh, you know, they brought back news of, of the United States putting a military base, a naval base, on the island there. We had never even heard of Jeju Island, much less that the United States was putting up a naval base there. And that the islanders, especially in this little village of Gangchong, that they were resisting mightily. And it turns out, I saw some videos of it, it was priests and nuns, uh, just by the score, just, uh, uh, just very many of them come and staying consistently at the gates, blocking the gates, uh, forbidding or uh, you know, trying to prevent the big cement trucks and other big rigs from getting into the base, and then um, so, uh, and then learned more about their bishop there, who was very much uh, part of the resistance, very much encouraged it, very much an inspiration for the resistance, and that just moved me mightily because I, you know, uh, I've never it looked like a faith community in action where. Uh, where people are reunited with the bishop, you know, in order to reserve, you know, and so I went over and I experienced that, you know, but what I experienced was more than I expected, you know, on it. I felt, you know, it was resistance by the priests and the nuns and the villagers, constant, every day the Eucharist is held by the side of the road, there was a priest, and every, every day a number of priests and nuns would be at the different gates along with villagers and other supporters for the resistance. Oh. And uh, it was just so moving, it was a constant, ongoing thing. At the end of the day, when the resisting, blockading action would stop, you know, usually about three o'clock, there was the great, lively dance and so forth. Uh, it was a, just kind of a, just a real sense of joy, even though they felt very insignificant, very small, yet, yet they were very, very empowered by the presence of one another, I guess, I think the sense of unity and, and the cube crest being at the center of it. I think they were very empowered that way, you know. I think you mentioned too that <coughs> one of the things that impressed you was the backing of the structural church, yeah. the hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, it was very much a part of it, you know, that so much so that there was no structure in the sense of, you know, you get a, you had no sense of hierarchy, you, mm -hmm. you had a sense of, uh, uh, yeah, you had a sense of community, you had a sense of people uh, following at the, uh, you know, if you want to follow the, the, the leader, the spiritual leader, uh, and he himself being open and being uh, to what other people felt and reflected on. And uh, so, any, anyway, it was a great, uh, just uh, a great sense of uh, faith and action. I think you were impressed too by the uh, company that was uh, doing all the work over there. Which company was that? Oh, that was a uh, Gangjian, or pardon me, that was Samsung. Uh, is the main contractor there, and of course they make big bucks being contractors in the United States. Well, uh, the United States on any kind of a military, diet, well, they'll pay three hundred dollars for a hammer, you know. So as you can imagine anybody that's a contractor with them is going to make a lot of dough. And Samsung who owns half of South Korea, I think, is the huge major construction man. And I would urge us to boycott Samsung goods in any way that we can. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but more than anything, I think it was a great experience in, in faith. It was more than David and Goliath here. It was a, a, a people that have been uh, empowered by their faith, by the Eucharist at the center of it, mm -hmm. uh, who are living that out. You know, and it was the most vivid example I saw of, of that being lived out on a daily example. No interruption. You know, in the United States we do actions that are intermittent, but there it's ongoing resistance. You know, and I'm very inspired to try to be a part of that here in the States and somewhere. Mm -hmm. What message would you have for the peace community, the people that are uh, actively uh, trying to stop nuclear weapons and things like that? Well, I think that we have to be 
consistent, you know, to have to, to know that we are called to peacekeeper, you know. Uh, it's not just calling for a, a boycott of Samsung here in this country, mm. you know. But I think it's a call for us in some way or another to gather as peacekeepers to empower one another and to continue to walk in that spirit, mm. you know. Uh, you know, there are domestic things we have to worry about, there are uh, national things we have to worry about, uh, you know, whether it's uh, forbidding the import of coal into our region to be exported to China or other places, you know, um, whatever, uh, what, whatever the issues, but um, I, I think it's necessary for us to become uh, peacemakers that are uh, active. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Father Bixel. That's all right. Very good. <laughs>